Welcome everybody back to Planescape Torment. We uh, just stopped right here. We're gonna talk to this guy and try and save his life. Um, this is actually Monday morning-ish um, since we had a pretty busy weekend and I couldn't get that recording in uh, and I was also not feeling super well. I'm still not feeling super well, but we're gonna have a video because I, I want to play a little bit and um, Yeah, we did get new lights, but right now you're not really seeing them because we still don't have curtains and there's daylight outside So there's just a lot of light coming from this direction um, and and uh, yeah Hopefully the lights okay and the the sounds okay and let's keep going I'm gone Yeah, talk to him uh, Need to talk to Santos sir. Good luck Santos. We've got to talk call through the door. Oh Okay Sandoz's voice is muffled by the thick door. What do you want? The voice sounds desperate and lonely. I'm here to talk to you, Sandoz. You want to talk? Is that what you want? How about you listen? The voice pauses and then gathers steam. What's the point of it? That's what I want to know. Why do we do the things we do? What's the thing that keeps us driving? Wait for him to continue. Pride. Pride and ego. We keep telling ourselves that we can be something, that we can mean something, that there's a reason we're here. But in the end, in the end, it's all just blackness. I've seen that final blackness and there's no reason to deny it. Yet we keep pushing out, uh, pushing on out of foolish pride. There's no reason to it. Did you ever consider that you've, you became a godsman for a reason? What do you mean? You found a reason once. You believed that all we face is a test. You believed that we're here to push past that final blackness to overcome it. Don't tell me you've gotten weak now. He barks out a sharp laugh. They taught you well, at least. Let me think about this. I hope you've got some time. All the time in the world, Sandos. Think it over. When it speaks again, the voice sounds a little more balanced. Go down and tell Keldor you've talked some sense into me. I want to, him to see him eventually, but you've done your job. Go on now. Thanks. Okay. So we've, we've, we've talked to him. I owe you my life, stranger. I won't forget it. But right now, I have some thinking to do. I hope you'll forgive me for not talking. That was very short and easy and okay. All right. I guess. <clears throat> uh, okay. Talk to Keldor. Have you succeeded in convincing him that life is worthwhile? I have succeeded. He has regained his zest for life. You have succeeded. Glorious news. Congratulations, my friend. You have proven yourself worthy of joining the Godsmen. Would you like to take the oath now, or perhaps wait until later? So, I haven't joined any one of the factions because I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know if it means... I'm, I'm positive that I will gain access to some things, but I don't know if it means that if I go into one of the factions, I anger the other factions, or I am barred from the other factions completely. Um, and since I have no freaking clue, I think it might be time to just try and go ahead and do it um, and see what happens and see if I can join other factions and see what happens. So let's do it. Um, I, I could say that, it's, that I won't join the faction because I don't believe in what they're in, in their uh, philosophical terms. But that would be, there's a dissonance here. There's a, there's a question of, am I the player? Am I talking as the player or as the player character? There's two different parts, and do I differentiate between them or not? Um, <coughs> will I do everything that the character is doing? Do I, am I projecting myself into the player character, or am I playing a character that doesn't exactly talk to my own personal beliefs? And that is a question that is interesting. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion to have there. As far as I'm concerned, though, I treat this as a game where I want to, I want to experience as much of the game as possible, and I want to enjoy the game and see where it takes certain aspects that might not relate to me. So definitely, player character and player are two different things for me. Um, and the player character won't necessarily have a, an exact personality or, or moral compass, as much as it will do whatever I want it to do, so that I, may, as the player, may experience as much uh, of as it, as it possible of the game, um, and that is honestly a problem that I've had with every game ever, any RPG ever, um, and that's a that's a big issue, you know. That that's kind of I, I think that mechanical choice is fantastic, uh, and I think that narrative choice is a problem because. It is never, I never actually get narrative choice. I, I never I never really feel like narrative choice is 
like I am in the game, like I am actually making a narrative choice out of narrative considerations and not out of mechanical considerations in any game that I play. And that might be on me, but that's just the truth of it. I want to experience the game. Um, and so we're going to discover it. The Oath. Life's tribulations are tests. There is nothing I encounter that is not a lesson. Pain is the multiverse's way of reinforcing a lesson. What I hate most in others is a reflection of what I hate most in myself. I will act to activate my potential and to aid others in achieving their goals. I will remember that divinity's spark is present in everything. I swear fealty to the believers of the source and their goals, never to forsake them. You swear the oath and color smiles. Welcome to the gods, men, lad. Do you need anything from me now? Ask some questions. Dated my journal. I'd like to get some healing if I could. Purchase some item, place to rest. Secret project. I'd like to see the secret project if I could. Ooh, I gained an item. You have proven yourself trustworthy. Here, take this. He presses a token emblazoned with the godsman symbol into your hand. Do not lose it. If you do, I'm afraid I cannot replace it. So be careful with it. Is there anything else I can do for you? Yes, I have a few questions. I'd like to purchase some items. He also has aid. He can heal you. You can rest. You can identify. Buy and sell. He has some spells. Scroll of Iron. Fist of Iron, but it's level one spell. Does he have any cooler stuff? Force missiles. I think both of them have force missiles at this point. Improved strength, level four. I'm not sure if I actually have this. Um, yeah, it gives you a ton of strength, which is pretty cool. And of course, chain lightning storm. Uh, giant lightning bolts strike down all hostile, hostile creatures on screen, which is very important that it's hostile creatures because a lot of lightning spells go rampart and can totally hit you as well. A successful setting throw reduces to half damage. This is a great spell, but it's level six. And it's level six. And it's level six. Um, <laughs> Ascension, reason, enlightenment. Oh, it's a dagger. Only usable by godsmen. I'm assuming the others are also only usable by godsmen and by fighters and stuff. Yes, but this is pretty cool. Um, it did charisma and armor class, and it's a pretty good one, but I don't really need a weapon uh, with him, like, whatever. I do kind of want chain lightning, but I am kind of far away from it in terms of actually using it, so... Yeah. Blah. Okay, we are godsmen now. Um, I do want to talk to the lady... Both ladies, actually. Sarosa and also the other lady. Um, what's her name? <coughs> the honor kiss lady. Oh, there we are! I'm a godsman now, apparently. Godsman now. Cool, let's talk to Sarosa. Thank you for your words. My father Sandoz is alive and well. I can only hope that whatever force has scarred him this way, I cannot believe he came to this on his own, will pay for its misdeeds. What else can I do for you? Why do you call me half man? I see that, answer my other questions. Um, you have a special talent, tell me yours. I know not how blah blah, can you teach me? Can you change me? I can change you, but I cannot teach you. What is the price? Tell me, do you subscribe to the philosophy of the godsman? Truth, yes. My journal. Ooh, I gained wisdom. Holy crap, that's amazing. Uh, then I feel no qualms, and uh, this time it's the truth because I am a godsman. Then I feel no qualms in sharing my gift with you. She speaks in an arcane syllable, one that shakes you to your very foundation. And somehow your, feel, your flesh you feel stronger. Um, how did you do that? I don't know how I came by it, blah, blah, blah. Can you change me? I can change you. Um, if the price is right, what is the price? I've already spoken the words that will change your heart. The rest of you must learn to follow. All right, cool. So I already got that. Um, that's already been super lucrative to do this. Holy crap. Uh, okay, I don't think she has anything else to say, but that's amazing. That is amazing. Wisdom is the best. Uh, I mean, all three of these are fantastic. Um, intelligence. I think I'll, I'll, I'll go with, with wisdom a bit and, and raise that. Because it seems like this one... I, I, I saw that last time that it told me that I get an experience bonus. And I'm like, okay. So if I raise wisdom all the way, I get experience bonus. And I think that's kind of the best thing you could possibly do. Feels to me like the best thing you could possibly do. So, bet I Lin. Let's talk to her. Your godsman now, are you still uh, are you still happy with it? Um Thilden says you're an anarchist. Anger strikes her. What was that flash of anger? I don't buy that. Farewell. Okay. No, not really. Why not? It's not what I thought it would be. Because I'm coming to realize it's an empty title. 
It's not what I thought it would be. Few things are as we want them to be, and discontent comes to us all. Faction membership is an intangible reward. Think on this, and come back sometime later, won't you? Sure, I have some questions, though. Okay, so it's like she is an anarchist because she had a flash of anger. No, not really. Because I'm coming to realize... Would you say you're devoted to Godsman then? Truth, no. Would you say your lack of devotion is strong enough that you would like to strike at the government for giving the chance? She wants to recruit us. Yes, I would. And you've come to the right, reason, the right person. She smiles and a new light comes into her eyes. How would you like to strike against both the Biatsu war machine and the Godsman alike? What do you mean? What I mean is that there is a weapon of incredible power being developed here in the Foundry, and that it is being funded by the Biatsu, devils if you prefer. Destroying it will not only give you a shot at the faction you say you reject, but will also bloody the nose of the entire race of fiends. What do you say? I'll do it. She smiles with satisfaction. Good. Hit the machine on one of its weak spots and come back to let me know. What are we I'll let you know when I'm done. In the meantime, I had some questions. Why do you want to do this? Why? Because that weapon is a tool of the devils. Literally. The fiends are going to use it to wreak havoc, to wreak untold havoc and destruction across the face of creation. And no matter how many peacetime uses the infernal device might have, not one, not one will make up for the suffering it will cause. What about the workers? What about them? They are slaves to their faction, and the faction will not weep when they are gone. Why, then, should you care? I care because they're innocent. Innocent? Ha! <laughs> Only in an organization this corrupt could you call those who work on death machines innocent. What a joke. She pauses as if to clear her throat of bile. Will you destroy the machine or not? I will not. I will. I'll return the message of my success. Well, I can choose to do this and I can also not do this. But yeah, she's definitely not exactly here to help the machine. Let's go find out what the machine is then. Shall we? Um, for Betty Lynn, yeah. Right. I don't know if I'll do that. I don't have to. Let's see. Oh, I can talk to Alyssa Tilt now. Uh, she looks around. Don't tell anyone where you got this. She hisses. A golden medallion from around her neck and passes it fearlessly to you. Thanks. Okay, she gave me her item. That's that's nice. I'd like a tour. What's going on? Very well. I have other questions. Um. Farewell. So I got I got two Godsman tokens now, which is interesting. The fact that I managed to get two of them. I guess I they made it so that you have two options to ask for it. Um, check machine. I guess. I mean, there's both of them. This door is locked. We'll need a key. Where this? Good day. May I help you? Where can I find the higher, a uh, higher up? Either Sanders or Kogo. Thanks. What's behind these guarded doors? That's a secret. Very well. Can you tell me where to find the clerks? Either from a valued faction members, unless you're involved in the project itself. Um, where can I find the high ups? Very well, can you tell me where to find the clerk's homage? Can't allow you in. Fine. Thanks. You will need a key. Don't I have the key? This door is locked. But I just got the. Show the token. I've got a token. He examines the token. My mistake, sir. No. Good day. Okay, so that's open, but this one is not. Okay, interesting. Foundry Armory. Weapons Worker, Godsman. Klerla, Klerla, Klerla. The nozzle of the cannon fairly radiates magical energy. Okay, Godsman Guards, Weapon Workers, and Rags, Tongs, and a Forge Hammer, which we also got by asking. All we really need. You see a typhling clad in godsman clothing, carefully examining the thing in the center of the room? I can't really talk right now. We're at a critical phase. Critical phase of what? Yes, this project we're working on is a weapon that could have massive peacetime implications as well. We're not close to the end, but we are at a delicate phase. Delicate enough that it could put us all in a dead book if some Burke fails us now. What is it you're doing? We're adjusting the variables and the device's lower magical resonance. One mistake could sink the whole project, and if the project goes under, it'll take us all out in the resulting magical wave. And some other questions? Yeah. What are some of the weak points? It looks suspiciously. Why do you want to know? Because I do a little magic engineering myself and thought it might be possible to help optimize the work. If you pointed out the weak spots to me, it might be off 
be able to offer some solutions. He scrutinizes you and then apparently decides to trust you. Huh. Right now, what aren't the weak points? The outer shell is still weak, we haven't hardened it yet, the firing ports have their weapons, but the weapons are dangerously unstable right now, and the steam boiler inside it could blow with all the strain we're putting on it. The thing's practically waiting to fall apart. I'd say the biggest vulnerability is the firing mechanism on end here, and if it goes, all the workers go with it. Thanks, out of the questions. Uh, about a critical phase. Is a weapon could have massive peacetime? Blah, blah, blah. I see. Uh, what is this project? It's a weapon, I think. We're not sure if it's for war or for hunting, and powers above, if it's for hunting, I don't want to see the creature it's designed to kill. But when we're done, it's going to be part of, uh, on on a par with that chaos ship that Doomguard built a few years back with the Tanari. At least that's the theory. Uh, what does it do? You know, it's not enti I'm not entirely sure. You'd have to speak to one of the engineers for the uniform. For the information, uh, I know that it has a massive focused beam of heat. We've perfected that part at least. That part of it at least. We've even mounted it permanently into the device. There are other aspects to the thing that we've not even begun work on yet. Uh, we're not allowed to see them until we're done with each portion. Why is it again? What is it again? Uh, while the secrecy. If you knew an enemy was creating a weapon to use against you, wouldn't you do everything in your power to destroy it? We've got an idea who's it for, even. We've got no idea who's it for, even. Uh, we're just trusting the word of the high-ups that it won't be used in a way we'll disagree with. None of us know who's asking us to make it, so there's no chance we'll spill the dark of it to someone who wants to see it destroyed, especially because we've all sealed our lives on it. What do you mean by that? Because of the nature of this project, with the secrecy and all that, not to mention the magics that allow us to even work on the machine, we've had a seal to seal a part of our lives into the machine. We get our lives back when the project's done, but if it malfunctions or powers forbid it gets sabotaged, it takes our lives when it blows. That sounds bad. Um, how long till it's done? Probably won't be done for another decade, but the trickiest part of it will be done this year. There are some magical rituals that have to be done, and those take time. We'll all breathe easier knowing we're not sealed to a project that's going to detonate because it's unstable. And... Okay, what's all the secrecy? Other questions? You can tell me who this project is being built for. No, I can't tell you that. For one thing, I don't know. For another, I signed a secrecy contract that binds my life to the integrity of the project about your boss. You can usually find her in here somewhere. She's a Githrazi who, can, who got exiled from her people. She's working here because she doesn't get seen much and so her shame is lessened. She's brilliant and hard-minded. Speak to her later. I have more questions. I wonder if she'd talk to my friend Akan here. I would be honored to meet another outcast, another exile. Perhaps the sharing of our shame will lessen its sting for both of us. Mm. Uh, we will speak to her soon enough, my friend. In the meantime, I have another question for our friend here. That's cool. Um, tell me about the engineers. Our chief engineer, Neil Zander, is a genius. He has created works I have never dreamed possible. Ward is, uh, Ward is he has, he even created a folding portal and is working on a dream builder in his spare time. It was said that long ago his family was contracted to create this machine for a man who could not dream himself. Um, our other engineer, Bentley Lin, is newer but equally bright. She's a little erratic, but her work shows great promise and skill. You can usually find them in the meeting hall. Great. <laughs> I am tired. Okay, those are all the weapons worker, and now... Okay, 135. That's her name, man. Don't look at me like that. You see a Githrazi woman, bald, with scarred cheeks and a catch grace in her walk. As she turns towards you, she spies Dakon. Her eyes widen. She addresses him. You bring joy to my heart. My name is Clarela. May I aid you? My companion would like to speak with you concerning the workings of the device. May he speak to... For the two of us? She looks at you and looks back at him uh, quizzically. Of course, esteemed one. If you speak for him and accept responsibility for keeping what passes here secret, she turns her attention reluctantly to you. You have questions for me? Yes. Then ask, and I will tell you if I may. Your companion carries the burden of your secrecy in this matter as a part of his own honor. And where I know not if I can trust you, I know I can trust him. Okay. 
Tell me what this device does. Our device spouts forth a certain type of magical fire that harms even those resistant to ordinary fire. We are working on applications that might even get around a creature's magical resistance. What other applications might it have? Aside from its weapon values, it could be used as an excellent mining device. If tuned properly, it could harvest whole swaths of forest or fields of grain. It could harden a shell of Limbo's material for a time. We have even tried lesser applications of the technology there or even be used as propulsion across the spheres of Carceri. Its uses are limited by one's imagination. Uh, it is not purely a weapon of destruction. Interesting. What are the weak spots? She glances uneasily at Dakan, who measures you for a moment with his eyes, and then turns back to nod reassurance at her. Very well. The weakest spot is the firing mechanism at the rear of the device. Too much harm befalling that would be fatal for all of us. It would set off a chain reaction that would obliterate all those who are tied into the device. The saboteur would likely have time to flee. Those of us attached to the device would not. Attached? How do you mean? I mean that we have been bound by this, to this machine by necessity of the magical rituals that will empower it. Should there be an error or worse deliberate sabotage, I and all those you see in this room would surely be in incinerated. Worse yet, our spirits themselves would be destroyed, rend asunder, granted only the peace of cold, dark oblivion. Do you understand our secrecy? I suppose so. Who has contracted for this device? She glances around, sighs, and replies. Though I did not take part in the negotiations, I believe that it was the Biatsu who have procured our services. The token you wear will grant you some measure of diplomatic immunity to Biatsu you may meet. Baetsu. Ba ba Batizu. Why do I say Baetsu? Batizu. I guess. Are they different from the Biatsu? Because I remember the Biatsu, or maybe I'm just mispronouncing it. Because whenever I hear a big word, I just kind of pronounce it the way that I remember from when I was little. And when I was little, I did not know or did not bother to read stuff. Instead of trying to actually pronounce the word, I just said the word that I thought it was. And it's all stuck in my head. Like Biatsu and... and, and uh I'm trying to think about another, I don't know. Whatever. Uh, I'm sure that that will be useful. Answer some questions for me, if you would. Uh, what can you tell me of the engineers? She scowls, adding several creases to her scarred face. Speak to one of my smiths if you would know of the engineers. No kind words for the engineers will you hear from me. Why not? Why? Because they do not seem to share a love for this project as do their comrades. Because they are dreamers and do none of the action themselves. Because, ultimately, I do not trust that their intentions mean well for us, but instead benefit them and them alone. Uh, who is she and why does she treat you with such respect? Five, the con. She is of the people. Her markings tell of one who has walked the path from Limbo and has been made to not know our ancestral home. Her markings tell all Githrezi to render her assistance and tell the Githrezi that she is still of the people. Her reverence for me is that reverence shown to all Zerth. Very well, Clether, I had some questions. Okay. I'm gonna save and click this. Sabotage, no. Uh, the enormous device... Okay, I'm just going to play with the controls. You don't seem to have any success in changing anything right now. Leave. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sabotage this. I don't want to kill all the people. Done. I'm going to do the opposite thing. And tell Keldor, if I can, that Bedley Lin is evil. Right. I'm going to talk to her first. I mean evil. What about the workers? What about them? I care because they're innocent. I will not. They don't deserve to die. Then we have nothing more to speak of. Hold your tongue regarding this, and I'll tell no one you contemplated treachery. Farewell. Farewell, then. Bye. That was fun. Let's see if I can talk to Keldor. About her. Then we just have a machine. I turned her down, but I thought I ought to Updated tell you. My journal. His jovial face becomes both hard and grim. Is that so? We'll put her into detention then and find the truth. And if it's the case, we'll execute her. Excuse me, I have business to attend to. When he returns, Keldor faces set. Your information has apprehended a dangerous criminal. We've scored points with the Harmonian and the Mercy Killers for this, and we owe it to you. You have our thanks, and on a personal level, you have my gratitude for proving I was right in believing you to be an excellent choice for a godsman. No problem. Nothing. Farewell. I'm not going to do that, right. because I'm going to save the option for later and maybe even look it up. And the reason is because they gave me no experience points. Seriously. If you keep bobbing about Skull, I'm gonna mount you in the end of a pike. <laughs> um, if they would have given me experience, I would have been cool about this. But they didn't. And I'm not cool about this. <laughs> I want my experience, man. I want my goddamn experience. 
Okay, we're about 20 minutes in. So, uh, we're kind of done with the Godsmen right now, for now, it seems, I think. I, th I think. I think. Uh, which is nice. And, uh, okay. So, what we're going to do right now, um, chat with our allies. And so, we haven't talked to everybody for a bit. I don't know how long it's going to take. It might take three minutes because there's absolutely nothing. Man, I'm tired. Ugh, God. Okay. Um, I need to get more sleep. It might be nothing because nobody has anything new and interesting to talk to us about. But maybe. Yeah, what's eating you, Chief? Can you remember what's tattooed in my back again? Don't tell me you forgot again. I just need to refresh my memory. I know you feel like you've been drinking a few kegs of steak squash, but you need to center yourself. Among your possessions is a journal that will shed some light on the dark of the matter. Farad can fill you in on the rest of the chant if he's not in the dead book already. Keep going. I will, I will. Hold on. Uh, Alright, here's the last bit. Don't lose the journal or we'll end up in the sticks again. And whatever you do, do not tell anyone who you are or what happens to you. Or they'll put you in a quick pilgrimage to the crematorium. Do what I tell you. Read the journal, then find Farad. Go on, what does it say? What are you talking about? There isn't anything more. What about don't trust that don't trust the skull? Updated my journal. What about Oh, that bit at the end. Well, I figured it was wash, so I didn't read that line out loud. Oh. Was that did I discover at some point that that's there? Did I see it at some point and Mort is not telling me and he didn't tell me when we originally Oh really? And what do you think it means? Do you think it refers to you? I doubt it. I mean, you can trust me, right, Chief? Are you lying to me, Mort? No, come on. What's your problem, Chief? I haven't steered you wrong yet. Yet? I don't like the fact you didn't read me that line, and I'd like to know what else you've neglected to mention since we've been traveling together. Nothing. I've told you everything. Well, almost everything, but nothing, you know, dangerous. If there's anything else, I suggest you tell me now. Chief, seriously, there's nothing else. I wouldn't hold out on you. All right, then, Mort. I have some other questions. He is super lying. Okay, Mort is a... Terrible liar. Wonderful. Can you read to me what's it? Can you tell me a little bit about Sigil? I've been tagging along, but is there anything else you can do except chatter? Hey, chattering's my best trait. He rattles his teeth for a moment, then grins. Eh, eh. Oh, that's good to hear. Yeah, I know about the litany of curses, Mort. I'm more curious about what you got while you were at Lothar's. May I made some friends. Yeah, we have already... I see. Uh, extra line of tattoos on my back. Yeah, there's nothing more I can get out of this for now. You said you're a mimer. Yeah, a mimer is a floating encyclopedia. You put information in, you get information in. It's probably a lie. Uh, what do you know about the night hag Ravel? Well, she's a night hag, and she has definitely bar me enough to make you immortal of all people. I mean, she could have chosen me, Mort rolls his eyes. Still, anyone addled enough to lock blades with the Lady of Pain isn't someone we really want to find. Oof. How did you die? No idea. I kind of forgot when I died. Can't say I blame myself much. At least there was something waiting for me after I died, even if it's life of a floating skull. I mean, it could have been worse. Okay. So, Mort's kind of a dick, and he's kind of lying to me, and I got a bit of experience for it, which is kind of nice, but that's about it. Cool. Hi. Let's talk to Anna. Hi. What is it you want, then? Oh, is it you want, then? Uh, I have questions of how you find my body. I... Well, what were you doing looking for bodies in the pregnant alley? I mean, you would have had to creep your way through the tenement, then pass the devas to get there. And then the place isn't even heavily trafficked at the rest of the hive, so why would you even look for bodies there? And a shark the rest of the hive is picked clean, it is. Got to find new spots to pouch deaders, you do. As Anna speaks, you feel a crawling sensation in the back of the skull, and you suddenly realize she's lying. Are you sure, Anna? There must be something on your tone, because it stops Anna's tail dead for a moment. Then it resumes a little slower than before. I, I think... She frowns, and she seems a little uncertain. I don't usually go there to scrap debtors. I don't, to think of it, I've never been there before. I just kind of came across it. So why did you go there? I, I don't know. I just did. And lucky for you, I did. Or you'd still be there. The same crawling sensation as before warms back the skull, uh, at the back of your skull. And when he comes out, another realization Anna's lying. But oddly enough, she doesn't know she's lying. Anna, were you compelled to go there? Is that how you found me? She nods slowly. I, mayhap. She gives a half-hearted shrug. It wasn't one of my usual haunts, but I, I couldn't help myself. I just wanted to see what was there that day. And there you were, dead as a timber, she pauses. 
you were like a lodestone. You were. I don't know what led me to find you. Hmm. I had some other questions. Didn't I meet you in the hive before I found Farad? She nods. I. I haven't forgotten you. What were you doing by the mortuary? It's my territory. Do you know how Farad died? I. She shakes her head. I don't know. No one with half a mind would. Farad got a lone shadow. He does. You cross him, and he end up getting to stick. You will. You don't have to accompany me anymore. If you need to stay with the buried village, I. Nah, Anne interrupts you. I don't need to be in the village. And I was wondering about if I do if Farad got penned in the dead book. I was. She snorts. Oh, well, he's probably mounting someone's wall in the halls, he is. But he's your father, don't you? Not my real da, he wasn't. Her eyes take on a hard look. He was greedy, and he was stupid, and he was selfish, and he was weak. She frowns, and now he's dead, and that's all. All right. Um, I don't want to become a thief. Have you heard of the night hag called Ravel Puzzlewell? As you mention the name, Anna spits three times and makes a semicircle over her heart. Psst, are you daft? Don't be mentioning her name if you value your life. Why? She's the evilest of the Grey Ladies, she is, and his voice drops to almost a whisper, as if afraid of being overheard. Filthy mean, and with more power that to toss around than some powers. It's said that all brambles, though, through and through, she's all brambles through and through, even her heart. It's said you can never kill her, because her body's like a tree. You lop off one limb, and there's always another skill still growing somewhere else across the plains. You speak as if she's still alive. Of course she is. She has to be. Anna's voice drops again. How would you kill a thing such as her? That's why the lady has to maze her, so it said. Hmm. Uh, nothing. Okay. So, let's just do the con. I'm gonna make another save because we've done some stuff. So, the con, last time we couldn't... In enduring, grow what? enduring grow strong. Um, last time we couldn't fully... Like, we were stuck on one of the um, circles of Zerthimod. <laughs> Jesus turns to you, his eyes like polished coal, his blade mirrors his eyes for a moment. As you address him, then he nods. What is your will? There's things I would know. Can I talk to you about... Uh, what is Shark Claw? The Khan's forehead creases as if it struck a blow. It is not my will that we speak of that place. The Khan, tell me what is Shark Claw. The Khan is silent. No, it is a place where I died my first death. What is this place? It is one of the great homes of the people. It has suffered many wounds in its life. One of its scars is by my hand. What do you mean? Upon rolling, upon the rolling plain of limbo, the people shape cities from the chaos with their thoughts. Know that there is no place for a divided mind. Dukan raises the blade from his shoulder and holds it before him. As he stares at it, it sharpens until it is almost as thin as a piece of paper. A divided mind is an unfocused mind. A divided mind fractures walls and weakens stone. As Akan speaks, the edges of the blade corrode slightly, the metal misting and melting along the edges. Many divided minds may destroy a city. I understand. Long have I known the words of Zerthimon. Through my voice, many have come to know the words of Zerthimon. The Zerth protect the community from all threats, whether the body of whether the body or the mind. They are the guiding stones in the chaos. So it came to pass that I spoke the words of Zerthimon without knowing the words of Zerthimon. It came to pass that I no longer knew myself. So you died of the words. No, the con's voice is edged, and his blade sharpens in response. I knew the words, yet I came into my heart that perhaps others did not know the words as Zerthimon knew them, and so division formed. And my mind became as two, and my mind became divided. Those that looked at me as a guiding stone became divided. Many scores of Githrazi, many hundreds of scores of Githrazi doubted. Shagtor died that day. So those that follow you came to doubt the words as well, and the city was weakened. The enemies of Zerthimon came, know that their hatred of this... Uh, of his words and the people lent their blade strength, know that they sensed the weakened city and they brought war with them. Many Gestuality drowned in the chaos and beneath the blade blades of our enemies. Small beads of metal appear on the surface of the blade, as if blistering. No, this happened long ago. What happened to you? As I fell from the walls of Shark Tor of Shark Tlor, uh, know that myself was broken, my blade was missed, my mind divided. It was adrift upon limbo seas, and I wished to drown. I died for days, my mind awash in division. How did you survive? As you speak the words, you feel a strange calling sensation eat its way through the back of your skull and your vision blurs. You take a deep breath and steady yourself. For some strange reason, you feel nauseous, as if the landscape had just started spinning around you. How did you survive? I suffered. As I neared death, I came to know myself. I survived, that is all. I had something to do with it? I, I, had, I had something to do with it. A, a past reincarnation had something to do with it. I think we've read this before, but now reading it again, Knowing a little bit more and also getting that. I don't know if we got that last time, but yeah Okay 
Okay. Can I ask you about a cheat sheet? I wish to give my current profession and resume the study of weapons craft. No. I've read the Unbroken Circle. Yes. I know that Zerthimon... Okay, it seems like I have another answer. Maybe because I raised my wisdom, or leveled up, or I don't know. <clears throat> Sorry. I know that Zerthimon's devotion to the people was such that he was willing to protect them from themselves. He knew the Illithids had come not to know themselves in their obsession with control and domination, so he chose to stop Gith before she carried the people to their death. There must be balance in all things, or else the self will not hold. Gain item, gain experience, gain item. You have seen the words and know them. Dakon's voice slows, and his hands grip the edges of the unbroken circle. He twists it clockwise, and there is a click as two plates slide forth. Dakon stares at the two plates in his hand. He makes no move to hand it to you. Dakon, is that second plate for you? Dakon falls silent. His blade has ceased shimmering. The film freezes upon its surface. He is staring at the second plate, paralyzed. Do you know, do you know the sixth circle? Dakon looks up, but his cold black eyes do not meet your gaze. No, there is nothing more I may teach you. You know the way of the people know it, and it shall give you the direction by which you may know yourself. That's not what I asked. Do you know the sixth circle or not? Dakon is silent for a moment, then speaks. His voice is slow and careful. It has come to pass that I do not know the sixth circle of Zerthimon. Once I knew it, but I know now I only saw the words. Dakon's eyes stare through you. That is all. That is my path, and I no longer know the way of Zerthimon. Was it because of what happened at Shaktor? In Shaktor. I do not know. The people became divided, and the people suffered. Upon reading the Unbroken Circle, I know now that I took the knowing of the Fifth Circle and used the power of One to bring about the Sixth Circle in Shaktor. In so doing, I divided the people. There was much suffering. I carry Shaktor with me always. The Khan, there is one other thing I would know. Why is Vilkor's eye in the Circle of Zerthimon? It seems strange. It tells of how the people benefited from a treachery from their own. It seems... The Kansai's flash. I have told you it is part of the telling of how people came to know freedom. Do you not listen? His voice flattens as if he is reacting a, reciting a passage from memory. It tells the people that even in the greatest treachery, a greater knowing may be achieved. It does sound to me like you believe that. I think there's another reason Philcor's eyes in the circle of Zerthamon. It is set there because of the sixth circle and the pronouncement of two skies. It's there to justify Zerthamon's treachery to the people upon the blasted plains. The Khan is silent and his blade bleeds into a dead black, into a dead black, teeth rippling along the edge. He divided the people upon the blasted plain, Dakon. He divided your race. When they were on the path to, of victory, I would like to believe that it was because he wished to save the people from themselves, but I do not think you believe that. The Khan is silent for a moment, then he speaks slowly. I do not know the Sixth Circle as it is known to others. I fear that the third circle, the fourth circle, and the sixth circle are more closely linked than many know. It is in that knowing that I have lost myself. In the third circle, Zerthamon submerged his will to deceive the Illithid. Then, in the fourth circle, it speaks of the benefits of treachery. Then, in the sixth circle, Zerthamon divides his people before they exterminate the Illithids. Do you think Zerthamon's word may not have been his own? Know my words, and know the wound that lies upon my heart. I fear that when Zerthimon was upon the pillars of silence, he did not submerge his will. I fear his will was taken from him by the Illithids, and when he spoke upon the blasted plains, it was their words he spoke. I fear that what he did was not for the people's sake, but for our former masters. It's possible, but no, it doesn't necessarily mean it. my journal. Mean he then know this and speak of it no more. Dakon's voice is like a knife. No that I shall never know the truth. There is no resolution to this matter, for I shall never know Zerthamon's heart upon the bastard plains. His coal black eyes glare at the stone circle in his hand, and so I do not know myself because of the unbroken circle of Zerthamon. Very well, we'll discuss this no more. Achievement unlock shattered circle. I have two of them. Balance in all things into the spell book. When hit the same number of times as level four duration, when hit the same number of times as level four or five seconds slash level of caster. Level divided by four. Five seconds per level of caster. Uh, um, told Gith there, can only, there cannot be two skies in the wake of his words came war.
What what does it do? Mage is the con in the nameless one. So they both learned that spell. Book was I. Balance in all things. What what does it do? Okay, the spell only affects the caster. Whenever the caster is attacked while the spell is in effect, all hostile creatures take equal damage. It lasts for one attack per four levels of the caster, and the effects are not cumulative. You cannot have more than one balance spells erected. If the spell is not triggered, it lasts for five seconds per level of the caster. I see. That's what it means by that. Um, that's interesting. Level three spells. Okay. All right. Oh. I lost some things. That, uh, yeah, because I'm full. I'm full of a lot of crap. <laughs> that is that I do not need. This is just rags. And this is the forge hammer and the tongs, which I don't need a million more of them. I'm just gonna put them here for now. Okay, that was interesting. The small round stone. Okay, examine the plates. Reread the first, the second, the third, the fourth, the sixth. Examine the place, see if you can puzzle out any new combination. Aha! Uh -huh. As you examine the rings of the second circle, you find a strange link in the plate that mentions the laboring of the gift people to achieve the rising. A new circle emerges from the link, and you unlock it, pulling the plate forth so you can study it. Read the symbols. No, that the rising of the people against the Illithid was a thing built upon many turnings. Many were the people who lived and died under Time's Blade while the rising was shaped. The rising was shaped upon a slow foundation. Steel was gathered so that it may mark Illithid flesh. A means of knowing the movement of the Illithids was established, at first weak and confused, then stronger, like a child finding its voice. When the movement were known, then the Illithids were observed. In observing them, their ways of minds were known. When the ways of the Illithid were known, many of the people were gathered and taught in secret the means to shield their minds and the way to harness their will as weapons. They were taught the scripture of steel, and most importantly, they were given the knowing of freedom. That was a weird sound. These things were not learned quickly. The knowing of much of the ways was slow, and in all these things, time's weight fall, fell upon all. From the knowing of one's reflection in a steel blade, to the knowing of submerging the will, to the knowing of seeing itself, all of these things and more the people built upon. In time, they came to know the whole. Examine the circle again. Okay. What what did that do other than give me some information? I mean, cool information. Leave the encircled broken. The, 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 let's try to talk to the con one more time, and then we'll end for today. I hear your words. The pop, 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 pop. Here's making my skull itch. What is your will? There's something I would like to know. Can I talk to you about your teachings? I wish to give my current profession. No, I've read the unbroken. I want to speak to you about the way of Zorthiman. There was a seventh circle within the stone of Zerthimon. It spoke of the building of the rebellion against the Illithids. The con falls silent. What does the seventh circle speak of? It speaks of a time of time as an ally. Um, it speaks of time and labor, but I haven't found meaning in it. When I come to know the wisdom, I shall share it with you. I have enough wisdom to do it. <laughs> it speaks of time, uh, of time as an ally, not as an enemy. It says that patience can sharpen even the smallest of efforts into a weapon that can strike the heart of an empire. Your victories may be small, but over time a great victory may be achieved. The con is silent for a moment. Will you make this circle known to me? Take the unbroken circle and unlock the seventh circle. As you take the circle and twist the links, two plates slide from the interior and into your hands. You have no idea where they came from, but the unbroken circle of Zerthamon still seems intact. The seventh circle remains. The Khan watches you silently. There are two plates here. Perhaps you should both study them, you and I. The Khan is silent for a moment. There is much you have come to know of the circle, and your knowing carries a greater weight than mine. The Khan matches your gaze. Know that your path is mine, and it shall come to pass that as you knew the way of Zerthamon from me, I shall know the way of Zerthamon from you. We'll study the plates later. Or other things I would know. Very well. Okay. Once again, we get two. Seventh. 
Missile of Patience. Hmm. Where where is it? Where is it? Am I am I am I am I blind or stupid or something? Am I missing it? What's happening? Where is it? It was gone. It was it was here a second ago. Okay. Talk to the cop. Sorry, I was like, no idea what's going on. About your teachings. Now I'm quick saving. Range, duration, question, area, effect, special, question, only. Okay. Question marks ever. We don't even know, we don't know. This, we don't know what this is. It's like, it's a question mark. It's a question mark that doesn't tell us anything. Okay. I succeeded in learning the spell, even though clearly no clue. Any new combinations? I don't know, I'm just gonna learn it and see what happens. As you examine the rings of the seventh circle, you suddenly become aware of a pattern in a way that links are formed. You hook your fingers into the slides of the circle, and the sides of the circle unlock a hidden segment, pulling the plate forth so you can study it. Know that a mind divided divides the man. The will and the hand must be as one. In knowing the self, one becomes strong. Know that if you, if you know a course of action to be true in your heart, do not betray it, because the path leads to hardship. Know that without suffering, the rising would have never been, and the people would never have come to know themselves. Know that there is nothing in all of the worlds that can stand against unity. When all know a single purpose, when all hands are guided by one will, and all act with the same intent, the planes themselves may be moved. A divided mind is one that, that does not know itself. When it is divided, it, is, it, it cleaves the body in two. When one has a single purpose, the body is strengthened. In knowing the self, grow strong. In knowing thyself, grow strong. Okay. We now have an eighth. Endure. Endure, Endure what is your strong. will. There are things I would know. Teachings. I have read. There was an eighth with the stone of Zerthimon. It spoke to the vision of the mind and the importance of focus. Almost reverent. What does the eighth circle speak of? It speaks of focus and discipline, about how not knowing oneself can physically divide the man. It also speaks of the weakness that the vision causes. It seems to me that it tells one to not only know themselves and take strength from that, but that you fo your focus can reveal weakness in your enemy. Uh, will you make it known to me? Take the unbroken and unlock it. We gain how much? 10, 10k. As you take the circle and twist the links, two more plates slide from the interior into your hands. As with the seventh, you have no idea where they came from, but the unbroken seems intact. Uh, the eighth circle remains. There are two plates here. We should both... Blah, 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 blah. When the maid pronounced the sky, his words were those of the Illithids, but of the people. The con stares at the plates as eyes flickering over the geometries upon them. Then look up and matches your gaze. His blade bends, shifts, until he shimmers you know... The shimmering you noticed before has become a silver glow. He seems stronger somehow. Oh, dexterity plus two strength plus one. Whoa, constitutional... What? What? That is a lot of... Oh my god. Know that when death comes to you, know that I shall meet its blade with mine. Know that when all dies around you, know I shall live for your sake. 
When we die, the Khan shall be the same death. It shall be the pronouncement of death, of two deaths as one. My journal. What? Closing the circle, achievement unlocked. What? 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 <laughs> Allow user to copy Zerthamon's focus into Spellbug. Um. Uh oh. Bam. You copy that, and I copy that, and we both copy that, and ba bam. Zerthamon's focus. This enchantment helps the target remember Zerthamon's teachings on the way to channel one's mental and physical focus during battle. When cast, the recipient's chance for a critical attack is raised for five seconds per level of the caster. Cool. That's pretty cool. <clears throat> I guess. Whoa, is the con super sexy now? Holy crap. Yeah, look at him! Look at him! He's still not a very good uh, mage, considering he has 13 intelligence, but look at the dexterity and constitution. And strength. I think strength he has plus two or plus one from stuff that I gave him. Um, he has a tattoo, right? Yeah, a tattoo of might. So he's got 18. Holy hell, Dekan. You sexy motherfucker. Okay. Uh, very cool. Can we... Is there anything else? Examine the circle, studying the links, but no new circles reveal themselves. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good. We're done with this. <laughs> All right, and he got more. Did he get more HP? Maybe he got more HP. Uh, cool. My journal uh, also. I think the discovery of the eighth circle brought Dakon to a greater understanding of himself and removed the doubt that it afflicted him. I literally watched him shed the coat of years when I told him of the eighth circle. In hearing my words, Dakon made the pronouncement of two deaths as one, where he swore that when death came for me, he would be displayed with his. Uh, did we just complete the cons the whole thing? Uh, never mind. Yeah, there's nothing. Okay. Cool! That was very cool. What the hell do we do now? We go to the upper ward. The coffee maker. I think we've done everything we can here. So we just go to the upper ward now. Um, and then we, we come back to the other wards. The upper ward! And like leaving this area and stuff thank you so much for watching as usual uh i'll see you guys on the weekend uh, we should be uninterrupted uh depending on how i feel i guess it always depends on how i feel and, and how things are going uh but yeah thanks so much for watching and i'll see you guys next time cheers <laughs>